RTX 3060 is finally here, which can only mean one thing. It's time to build an awesome 3060 gaming PC for under $1,000. In this video, I'm going to run you through all the parts I chose and why, the build process step by step, so you can follow along if you like, before booting this machine up and seeing how well the 3060 performs in around 15, yes, 15 of the most popular titles. Let's do this. I'm going to kick things off by installing the CPU into the motherboard. This is AMD's Ryzen 5 3600, a great value 6 core 12 thread chip. The new Ryzen 5000 series are great, but they're really expensive and they're all out of stock, unfortunately. I'm going to pair it with MSI's B550M Mortar motherboard. This is a great value B550 board that has support for dual channel memory with four RAM DIMM slots, as well as a pair of M.2 slots for super fast storage. Installing the CPU is pretty simple. Simply line up this triangle here with the corresponding triangle on the motherboard socket, lift up that retention arm and drop the CPU nicely into place. Next up is our RAM or our memory choice today and I've gone for 16 gigabytes of Corsair's new Vengeance RGB Pro SL. This is a lower profile new version of the Vengeance Pro and with a 3600 megahertz speed dual channel, you're going to get some great performance today. This is a really great value RGB RAM kit and once again is easily installed by simply finding the notch on the RAM in itself here in our instance and lining this up with the corresponding notch on the motherboard dim slots. We want the second and fourth slots, pull back those retention clips, simply slide the RAM dim in and apply even pressure to both sides to secure it into place. Repeat for as many dims as you've got and just like that, we're sorted. With the CPU and the RAM installed, next up, it's time for the storage. And I've gone for this, Seagate's Barracuda 510. It's an NVMe drive that gives you really fast speeds, but at an affordable price point. 500 gigabyte or one terabyte options would be my go-to choices, but I'll link those alongside all the other components today in the description below for latest pricing and availability. For this, you wanna grab a teeny tiny little screwdriver, famous here on the channel, and remove the two screws on the M.2 heat sink. This is going to reveal the M.2 slot underneath, which we're then going to slide the M.2 drive into. It helps to do this at a 45 degree angle before pushing the drive nicely into place. The drive is actually going to be secured down by our heat sink, which simply sits on top of the drive and fastens down a little something like this. The next task is to install the CPU cooler. Now you could stick with the included stock cooler. It's going to work fine, but it does run a bit hot. It is going to be a bit loud and an aftermarket cooler is going to be a better shout. This is is the Deepcool AS500, which as you can see got a bit damaged in shipping. Uh, but this is a great cooler with a really beefy heatsink and a large fan, which is cool, quiet, and collected. Much like me. I, I, yeah, much like me. What do you reckon, Dan? Am I cool, quiet, calm, collected? Sometimes. So, sometimes. Whoops. Inside the CPU cooler box, you get these two brackets, and they're going to sit on the already installed and included backplate that comes with the motherboard. We do that by taking these four screws with the plastic stoppers on the bottom and placing these around the CPU. Those brackets then secure nicely on top with these thumb screws, and then that's going to allow us to install the cooler really easily. We're then just going to pop a drop of thermal paste that comes included with the cooler. That is going to be more than enough, they say, about the size of a grain of rice. I wouldn't know because I don't eat rice. Anyway, um, <laughs> when you've done, you've done that, the cooler then really easily pops onto that mounting hardware. These screws then just fasten down into that plate, and just like that, the cooler's installed. We're going to pop the fan on later to make sure this is nice and easy to drop into our chassis choice. And on on that note, it's now about time to move the motherboard into the case. The motherboard assembly, as we call it, is looking pretty good, but the case is what I'm really excited about today. This is a new chassis from Deep Cool called the MA Cube 110. Okay, here it is. We've got this kind of cool two tone, uh, kind of white and black finish. This side panel is like, oh, that's cool. It's magnetic. That just comes off. That's super easy. And then we're also going to take off the rear panel as well to make the case super easy to work with. Plus, if Cameraman Dan can give us a close-up of this, we actually have a GPU support bracket as well, which is going to be super useful because our Gaming X Trio is a thick boy. Right, to install the uh, to install the motherboard, this is, pretty, this is pretty simple. All you've got to do is find each of the holes through the board itself and then line those up with the corresponding
corresponding standoffs in our case. In our instance, they're all in the correct place apart from one, which is this one, and we just need to remove that. A little something like this. Once you've done that, you want to take this bag of included screws, which comes at the rear of your chassis, and it's these screws we're going to use to secure the motherboard into place. The built-in IO shield as well means you haven't got to worry about that. So it's happy days. With the board in, I'm then just gonna pop our CPU cooler fan on before moving on to the power supply and then the graphics card, which I am honestly so excited about. Yes! <laughs> cool, with that, that brings us nicely onto the power supply. This is obviously the most boring component of any system, but it's quite important that you get it right. And this deep cool 650 watt power supply is 80 plus gold certified with a 10 year warranty. A little bit overkill, but it never hurts to have a really highly rated PSU to keep all your components nice and safe. Now inside of the box, we get the power supply in a very fancy bag and then an interface where we can plug up all of our different cables. We're going to plug up a 24 pin motherboard power connector, an eight pin CPU power cable, a SATA power connector for any fan hubs or RGB controllers, and then finally, a dual 6 plus 2 pin graphics card power cable. And once we've done this, the power supply then just slides in fan facing downwards to the bottom of our chassis. Nice, and with that, we're gonna come back to the cables in a second. It is finally time to install the graphics card. Specifically, this is the brand what was it? <laughs> I dropped it. This is the RTX 3060. It's a 12 gigabyte card from NVIDIA. Specifically, this is the MSI Gaming X Trio version. Now, I hope and I pray that the stock on this is a little bit better than it has been on the 60 Ti and 70, and maybe these extra SKUs will kind of spread that demand out more evenly. I'm expecting big things from this card, and while we will cover all the performance figures in detail a bit later in this video, if you check out the playlist in the top left corner or top right corner now, that has all of our unedited RTX 3060 benchmark runs for all of your favorite titles. Here we go. I'm so excited. This is so... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here we go. Let's get, a, let's get an overhead on there. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, my goodness. It's still... Look at the wrapping. Oh, my God. Are you ready for the, the mega peel of peels? Whoa. Look at this thing. Oh, that is awesome. That is so awesome. Really interestingly as well, this card has two 8-pin GPU power connectors. So it's interesting to see what performance we'll get on this card over maybe some of the cheaper derivatives. You, of course, get all the standout technology from NVIDIA, such as the latest RT cores for ray tracing, DLSS, and then all the NVIDIA broadcast suite, as well as the ability to easily stream and record games. And I'm really excited to see how this performs at 1080 and 1440p. To install it, we're just going to unscrew this thumb screw at the back of our system and this makes way for our PCIe brackets. We just need to slot out the top two PCIe bracket covers and then go ahead and slide the GPU into place. And with that, the PC is pretty much done. All that's left to do is plug up our power cables. First up, our CPU power connector, followed by the largest connector of all today, the motherboard power cable, and then our two six plus two pin GPU PCIe power connectors. We're also going to plug up the front panel cables, which includes our JFP1 front panel power and reset and hard drive indicator LEDs, the HD audio to make the audio ports on our case work, as well as the USB header. This is notched so it only goes in one way around and is installed a little something like this. And on that note, it's about time that we boot this system up and see exactly how it performs. But first, how good it looks when it's all powered up in an awesome Gigawatt montage. Roll the montage. Okie dokie, now we've seen just how good this system looks when it's all powered up, and of course the process of putting it together, let's take a dive and see exactly how it performs. On your screen now is a snapshot view, a summary of all the games we benchmarked on this system, some of the latest and most popular titles, as well as our temperature performance findings. I'll link in the card section actually, the full playlist of all the unedited gaming benchmark runs for every single title, so you really can check our workings and get a really clear idea of how well this system will perform. For now though, let's take a look at some of our focus titles and kick things off with GTA 5. At 1080p, the recommended resolution for this build really 
high settings in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode, we got 110 FPS on average, with 102 and 90 for the average and 99th percentile results. Some really solid numbers here at 1080p high settings. As I say, the resolution and setting combos that most people are gonna be using on a 3060 gaming PC build. Next up today is Watch Dogs Legions. Here at 1080p high settings with DLSS set to performance mode and ray tracing disabled, we got 110, 103 and 97 FPS for the average 90 and 99th percentile results. This is around 14 FPS on average less than the 3060 Ti we tested. Check out that video in the cards section now, which I think is actually a very respectable result and puts this 3060 damn close to its more expensive TI bigger brother. Testing with ray tracing on at 1080p drops the frame rate down a little bit to 87, 77 and 74, but these are still great numbers and well above that all important crucial 60 FPS mark. At 1440p the numbers were also pretty good, high settings with DLSS on performance mode gave us 107, 97 and 91. So really not losing too much frame rate here, indicating more of a CPU than a GPU bottleneck. Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War was next up and here at 1080p high settings with DLSS set to performance mode, we got 117, 94 and 78 frames per second for the average 90 and 99th percentile results. Next up is Apex Legends. Here at 1080p high settings, we got 147 FPS on average with 136 and 122 for the 90 and 99th percentile results, indicating our frame rate really did stay very stable. You do take a little bit more of reduction at 1440p drop into 101 92 and 80 fps for those respective metrics and there is a more significant drop against the 3060 ti here than what we've tended to see across the board which got 139 fps on average in our testing either way though still over 100 fps at 1440p high settings that's esports frame rates at a high resolution high fidelity setup next up is valorant and there's no complaints about frame rate here 1080p high settings gave us 326 fps on average and the csgo inspired game with those more up-to-date visuals looks pretty class in my opinion cyberpunk 2077 is next up then one of the most popular titles around and also one of the most controversial this thing is so difficult to run and is still very buggy but the game is absolutely awesome once you get into that campaign and i'm glad to report that here we got some quite impressive numbers actually first at 1080p medium we got 75 62 and 55 with all our settings completely vanilla if you will but kind of spice it up a little bit turn dlss on set to performance mode and your frame rate increases by 25 fps on average at 1080p medium settings to 100 fps on average with 82 and 64 dlss of course being nvidia's fancy ai resolution scaling tech which you can learn more about in our 3060 written review linked down in the description below but what if you want to use nvidia's fancy ray tracing tech something which i think looks fantastic in cyberpunk well i'm pretty glad to report that the frame rate numbers were still quite good 59 52 and 46 and while they may seem a bit low compared to our crazy you know 300 fps valorant figures for what is more a role-playing game as opposed to a first person shooter these are very very respectable numbers and still well above what you'll see on something like a ps5 when you compare the actual settings and the visual fidelity that's been used dlss becomes an absolute must if you want to play cyberpunk at 1440p we still managed to achieve some pretty damn good numbers actually 94 80 and 67 with dlss tuned right up but as i say you really should judge this card on its 1080p gaming merits as that's where i'd absolutely recommend a 60 series card remember going back to the days of 1060 1080p medium settings at 60 fps was where it was at so the fact this card is capable of 94 fps at 1440p albeit with dlss cranked up is still very impressive fortnite then is the last title on our list today and here the numbers were pretty decent 1080p high settings with dlss set to performance mode gave us 140 44 fps on average with 125 and 110 for the 90 and 99th percentile results while 1080p competitive settings with dlss enabled jumps us up by nearly 100 frames per second to 231 205 and 185 fps for the average 90 and 99th percentile results and with that that pretty much wraps it up for not only the benchmarks today but for the whole video if you did enjoy it you know what to do give it a big old like rating make sure to get subscribed if you haven't already thank you for watching though and as always we'll see you in the next one